My name is Andreas and I'm one of the two owners of Box Manufacturer. All right, uh, Andreas, this is your rig, right? Exactly. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I first saw it, I, I said to you, I said, you know, Earth Roamer is tiny compared to this. <laughs> and it's true. So tell me about what you're overlanding with. Um, this is an MAN TGA, um, a 26 ton chassis, 480 horsepower, slightly adjusted to uh, over 500. That is important if you go steep grades go in low gears so you have a lot of power and uh, this one has roughly 2100 newton meter torque gives you a lot of uh, power when you really need it um, we have five seats in the front we are traveling with five family of five three children two adults and this was originally made for us so it has bunk beds and everything what we need as a family to travel so let's talk about the running gear. So it's a six by six, right? It's a permanent six by, by six. six. All right. So uh, do you have locking differentials? We have three locking differentials. We have low and high gears. Uh -huh. So overall, it's 32 gears. Okay. How many reverse and how many forward? I have 32 forward and four backward. <laughs> Makes a Unimog look pretty tiny in that's comparison. A, that's a similar system. Um, Unimogs have uh, portal axles that makes them even higher, higher sometimes yeah. from the from the ground clearance. But you can see it here with the 16R20 tires. We have still a very good ground clearance. Yeah, how much ground clearance do you have? I have never measured it, really? but it was, al it was always enough. Yeah. <laughs> I never struggled because like, of you know, the ground clearance. You know, it's like a Rolls Royce, if you have to ask. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I, to be honest, I have never measured it, but it's pretty high. All right. The, the bigger the trucks, the bigger the tires, yep. um, and um, the advantage is you get ground clearance, the advantage is you have a rough um, thread, so at the end you, you can uh, you can really go through rough terrain. So these are a military tire? It is also used from the military, yeah. but you can find it also on mining vehicles. The beauty is that they have an extremely strong sidewall. Um, so um, even if you scratch uh, rocks and, and sharper things, usually you don't damage it. This one is on a special rim that you don't need to take off the complete wheel. So you can open one part of it and slide the rubber off. That makes it a little easier. And this one has also a tire inflation system. It's not a central tire inflation system via the axles. So here you can select your tire pressure and you can inflate and deflate all six tires at the same time, which makes it very comfortable because the first goal is always keep traction. So airing up and down is a common a common thing for off-roading. So how long does it take? Let's say, you're, how, how far do you air down to? Yeah, usual street pressure is 110 PSI okay. and I can go down to 30, 35 PSI. That's pretty low, brings a big footprint on the tire and uh, airing up and down 20 minutes maybe 25 minutes yeah per tire no all together okay. that's the beauty it's quick fill valves you can see that here um, they have a larger diameter and that makes it so comfortable you just attach it to it with a quick release valve and um, yeah that makes it very very comfortable does it go all the way around does it do all, of them? all six tires okay. yeah it only makes sense if you have it on all tires um, otherwise, you can still go with your good old uh, tire pressure around, but this makes it faster. This one has uh, air suspension in the, on the rear axle and a normal leaf spring at the front axle, um, but the driver cap is also air suspension. So the rear axle, the driver cap and the seats are air suspension. So, so Makes a comfy ride. Really nice, soft yeah. ride. Yeah. Um, and how much does one of these tires cost if you need to replace one? It is really a question we, we have very often. It is between $850 and $2,500. It depends where you buy it. You can buy slightly used ones uh, from the military for a quite quite good price, $850,000. Now you're in the business of actually selling, not the truck, but the cab, right? So this is a custom built box. Yeah. So tell uh, me about the box, tell yeah. me what you do. So y years ago, yeah. um, it was um, a standard to build a kind of metal frame or a wooden frame, even in earlier times, and then use styropor to fill it, and then an uh, aluminum sheet um, to cover it. This is the, the old fashioned way. And um, we built, um, sandwich panels like composite sandwich panels you have always two layers of frp laminates and in the middle a polyurethane core and in the floor panel you have xps foams they are more pressure stable so in the floors we use xps foams so you build this back box we press the panels yeah. build the box 
put all the doors, windows, hatches, we press the doors and hatches together with the wall, um, then the windows and at the end you can say this is a stop point, I want to do my interior on my own, but um, we have also customers who prefer that we get a finished product so we go to all the way to the end. So if somebody wanted to buy, well, if they wanted to buy the man, they couldn't, right? Because it's not federalized. For, for exactly. America. Here in the U.S. it's not possible. This yeah. one is a 2004 model. So yeah. theoretically in Canada it would be possible, in Mexico, but not yet in the U.S. But there is comparable um, chassis in the U.S. like the Stuart Stevenson 6x6 or we have the International um, or the old Mercedes SKs. Which you can are, import those now. You can import those now, uh, 93, 94 model year, and they are quite capable, um, similar sized truck chassis for the box. All right, so walk me through kind of what you've done to it. So let's talk about the storage and let's talk about how you've set this yeah, up. Yeah, so when we start, um, everything starts with uh, with a test how much articulation you have in the axles. We build a proper subframe. You need to decouple the box from the frame. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's always the first goal. Building the box, we have a very specific way to um, um, assemble the, the walls um, with overlapping cuts that you have a maximum stiffness for the box. That's important if you go off-roading that nothing breaks. Um, and uh, uh, if you want to, to use this line here, this is everything above the chassis. So all these storage boxes are added to the box. So this is the line where the box more or less sits on the chassis. Um, and all the other boxes are attached to it as storage boxes for all your gear and equipment. So how have you set it up? What, what, do you, what have you put in the boxes and how have you set this up? Yeah, so we use part of the boxes for heating systems, we use part of the boxes for really storage um, um, and uh, at the end, the customer decides what he wants to bring. We like a lot if a customer brings us all their gear because then we can customize the, the boxes, the slide outs and everything. So it's a long process to build a, a truck like this. Usually we have a one year building time um, and part of the year is at least a three to four months planning phase. So every little detail is uh, in a 3D drawing. So the customer sees first, how do we lay out the, the furniture? And uh, that's really a long process from the first idea I want a truck um, until the day we can deliver it. This specific truck has 230 gallons diesel, 230 gallons fresh water. Uh, we have a, we ha yeah, it's heavy. Uh, when we start with yeah. five people, everything filled up, we have 18.5 tons. Wow, so and what's the payload on the truck? As it's it's a 26 ton chassis. Yeah. 10 ton is roughly um, the chassis itself. So um, you have a, a good 16 tons uh, for, for, for everything you build on. And we were talking about fuel economy. So in Europe, right, it's how many liters per 100 kilometers? So how many liters? Be between 30 and 40 liters. Yeah. It really depends on wind. Is it a soft surface? But if you go on highway, the, in Germany, the speed is limited to 80 kilometers per hour. Here in the US, um, I'm 50 driving 50. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm driving 55 in yeah. the U.S. Um, the capability of the engine is not the problem. The tires are rated for 55 miles, 90 kilometers per hour. So you could go faster, but you, the truck over the truck is open, so I have no um, no speed limiter in it. In Europe, uh, the law, by law, you have speed limiters. Yeah. Um, this one hasn't, and um, so at the end of the day, uh, the speed is uh, here limited uh, through the tires. So before we go inside, let's look what you've done in the back. Yeah, here in the back we have, uh, uh, that's a very common request, they want to carry bikes or motorcycles, you need to have your spare tire somewhere. Um, and the heavier everything gets, the more important is the connection to the chassis. Um, theoretically, a spare tire or a tire uh, um, um, bike carrier can also go on the rear wall, but everything when you, you see this setup here, motorcycle, we have five bicycles, um, we have the spare tire, um, that is not possible on the rear wall anymore. And you see the big attachment to the, to the main frame um, and that's where you can more or less uh, go for the, for the heavier equipment. So this lift is, is made for roughly one ton. So one ton and you can lower it and raise exactly. it. Exactly. Otherwise you can't get, how much is it, does the tire and wheel come away? The, the wheel combo yeah. here is roughly 500 pounds. So you couldn't, break, you couldn't raise it by yourself? You can't. Yeah. You can't. So what, what the goal is when you have a flat tire, it's also a very common question. Um, we have a, a 12 ton uh, bottle jack. We have a huge plate underneath to distribute the weight. Um, we have an extension and then you can lift the truck relatively easy by air. So now we attach the air system to it and then you can lift it up. And we have a large impactor with 1,400 Newton meter. We open all the nuts um, and then we have two large metal bars to properly carry it up and down. So as long as the tire is rolling, you're good. When it flips over, 
unfortunately two people are required to, have to get it up. Have you had to change one? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that happens. It doesn't happen very often, um, but you need to do it. Yeah, it yeah. happens. Especially the front one, right? You're, you're yeah, my, uh, the last two flat tires were in the rear axle. Right. Um, I don't know why. Um, and it was really also, um, uh, it was um, like nails, big, big nails going through so we could repair it. So um, Yeah, and I noticed you've got light and a camera on the back as well. We have a 360 degree camera. Oh, okay. um, it is really important um, if you have children or bicycle drivers in front of you you can hardly see that it's so high yeah. um, and um, so for safety the big trucks all get a 360 degree camera now that we've learned about the chassis and the wheels and basically the outside of this rig let's go inside and see what it looks like in the living quarters Uh, this is your personal vehicle, right? Yeah, we design the interiors around the customer. It's funny, I'm, I'm looking at one of the other vans next to us and we're <laughs> yeah. looking down on them. <laughs> yeah, we can, we, we, we can check, we, here, <laughs> we can check the solar system from our neighbor. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the beauty of a, of a high vehicle. And when we were talking before, you said you'd driven this in India and the Middle East. In Eastern Mid Europe. We lived five years in Dubai. That was a great time. Uh, Europe, obviously, also very nice areas in Eastern Europe. Um, Africa is close. When we tell uh, customers in the US that we can go on a two day trip to Africa just from Spain yeah. using a ship yeah. um, here, sometimes the same distance, you're not even two, two states <laughs> further uh, north or south. So that's uh, in Europe is obviously uh, a big market for us as well. This is uh, a 15 year old um, truck. Yeah. So, um, um, but the philosophy is still the same. We build the majority of the walls out of sandwich panels. So all of these walls here are uh, sandwich panels that makes the box stiffer. The insulation is good and also um, um, the the voice if you speak in it it's just more uh, more comfortable. We use um, usually household materials. We try to stay away from RV products. It looks like it looks like granite. It is it is like a Corian type uh, okay, yeah. material. Um, most of our vehicles don't have LPG. Mm -hmm. We try to stay on electric, electric systems. Yeah. Um, this is an induction cook field. We also have an oven. Um, we have uh, a dishwasher. Um, um, everything what you need we have a washing machine here wow, um, if you travel so our builds are usually for people who are somehow move in for a limited period of time or full time um, so our goal is to give them a rolling home with a certain comfort level safety level as much as it is possible tell, tell me about the electrical how much how much power does this have we, we have an 800 amp hour battery system okay. in this truck european trucks are on tw uh, 24 oh, volt systems yeah. the u.s ones are more on 12 volts so this is a 24 volt system we have 12 24 120 and 230 volts on this truck. So this was made for world traveling. So we have different chargers also as a kind of redundancy. Um, if one system fails that you are, when you are in remote places, still have a chance to use, um, to use the truck. Um, you can control the um, electric system. Um, he, right now we have no, no sun outside. It's early in the morning. So this is uh, what's coming from the 1000 watt solar system, which is quite disappointing this morning, to be honest. So um, uh, what you can say is in the summer, you don't have an electric problem at all. You can use whatever you want in the winter when the sun is lower. Um, we have emergency backup with an 8kW uh, diesel generator. Yeah, we need to accommodate five people. Yep. Um, my son is not always traveling with us, so he has a big bed when the table is down uh, in the front. My two girls are sleeping here okay. in the bunk beds on the other side. Let's see the, let's see the master, the master bedroom there. That's yeah. your room? You and your wife, I take it? All the way to the back. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a, the there's a shower in there as well. Yeah, you can close the door as well. For us, it was important to have a certain privacy when we travel. Yeah. You know how it is. The kids are sleeping, but you still want to watch a film. So um, at the end, we have two doors in between that gives everyone also a chance to disappear. When you travel, um, it's bad weather and everyone needs a little privacy. That was important that everyone has a room to disappear. So um, that is, I think, one of the 
the things w which were very important for us. Now, if I wanted to buy one of these, can you customize it for me? I mean, you said you could you could you could buy the box, or you could actually build out the interior. We we have partner companies, okay. so we can also help with chassis. Okay. It, it it can start as small as a Toyota Tacoma Ford Ranger. Yeah. Very small boxes with pop tops. Right. Um, the medium size is the four by fours. What we talked about, Stuart Stevenson F five fifties. That's the medium range up to fifteen feet, and then you need the big truck chassis for every which is more or less bigger than than 15 16 up to up to the I think our largest box was um, over so the largest um, truck we built was 35 feet so uh, if people are interested where you're out of Las Vegas right what's your website yeah it's uh, 3w yeah, uh, boxmanufacturer.com uh -huh. um, and we'll you, do a link in the, in the, yeah, the comments below. We, we also have a US company RE minus global.com and you can find us in Henderson. We have a showroom in Henderson. We have a big warehouse in Clovis, California, and we manufacture everything in Germany. Okay, that's cool. Uh, can we go in the cab? Can we say, can yeah, we say, yeah let's, let's go in the cab. I'd love to see what that looks like. <laughs> I, t I take this away. <laughs> um, so what, what we have here is a standard MAN truck chassis yeah. from 2004. So it's a commercial base, not a military base. We upgraded a little bit the, the seats, obviously. We took out the bed and added three more seats for our children. Um, we have an Alcantara ceiling. That's all what the customer wants. Um, nice. More important is you have this 360 degree system. Um, you have your GPS. You, we usually use um, also a tablet as a, as a GPS, whatever you, you need more information about your trip. Um, basically, you have your, your gear shifter over here. Um, it has a, a air supported gear shift. So there's a little button. You don't need to push the clutch all the time. Yep. So you do it with your thumb. That's pretty cool. And the engine lives underneath here? The engine lives underneath. How, does this thing hold? The whole, the whole cap tilts forward, forward yeah. and that's a very common European setup. So the long nose US trucks are not common in, in Europe. How much does all this off-road ability and German goodness cost. So let's talk about, you said you do different boxes. So let's yeah. say you start with a small box. Kind of, kind it's, of it's, it, start, it starts with an empty box, yeah. which is a basis for everything from $20,000. Uh -huh. um, subframes from five to $6,000. Um, and then the wish list of the customer is more or less dictating the budget. Um, you can build very nice vehicles from $180,000 to $200,000. You can go up to $700,000, $750,000 when it comes to these rigs, when it's br everything is brand new. Which, the you, range is huge. Which when you consider the fact that an earth roamer is it's basically built on a large F600 chassis, probably right? Hmm. Then, I mean, you're yeah. getting a real truck here. At, at the end, I don't know um, how our colleagues uh, yeah. budget their, their, their work. What we do is more or less we have a price for the truck. Yeah. We have materials. We roughly spend two and a half to three thousand hours in a build. If it's a build like this, the yeah. bigger ones. And based on that, we do our pricing. And uh, um, for us, 750,000 is already on the top of the range. We have almost no vehicle higher than that. The majority of our builds is between 250 and and four hundred thousand dollar. We have customers who really like the capabilities of the truck to travel around the world, but it's also clear that a lot of people still work. They have a limited time of uh, of holidays, vacations, um, and they go maybe for four or six or eight weeks and travel. We have customers in Europe shipping for the complete summer season to the U.S., enjoying the U.S. We have customers spending all winter in uh, in Morocco. Um, it is a huge. Um, there are so many different um, um, uh, people around um, that I wouldn't say there is always the world travel approach to it. There is always um, uh, I move permanently in approach. I think there is a big mixture of, of, of all type of customers. Thanks for your time. Yeah, that was incredible. Thank you. So there you have it. If you really want to go around the world in style, comfort, and best of all, capability, maybe this is the rig you want. What's a year waiting to have it custom built for you and on any chassis that you want? That seems like a short time for something that you can drive around the world and back again. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Truck. Check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, the ultimate off-road RV reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.